If you have your Bibles with you, you can turn with me to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 12. Money and greed. It got into me so big this week. I think I'm I'm getting sick at night just thinking about this conversation that our pastor were boldly expressing to you first time last week. That's Luke chapter 12. But it's it's one of the it's one of the message that we always take people and it's not always because there's a need. I think the timing of the message that pastor expresses to you regarding money matters is something that we could always look into because it's so hard when you stand in front and talks about money. Especially, especially if you know that in your own, you're struggling with it. But this morning, I'd like to take you how, uh, just for a short time, last week, money and spirituality number one was given to you. And pastor reminded us that 16 out of 38 parables talks about money. 16 out of 38. I listened to him over YouTube so I can segue to you what he expressed last Sunday. Knowing this is the path that God leads us, and I'm talking about me personally as a family representing the Pantojas. We've been here for seven years now. And standing before you, I want to say God is a good God. Amen. God is a very good God. When you people invited me to invest our life to the lives of our next generation, I knew, my family knew that this is where God is leading us. And I want you to know, it's not because of its bragging rights, but it's because of God's faithfulness. We can stand here before you and we can say, He's been faithful to our family. With regards to how much we are getting, with regards to how much we are getting, God has been suffice in every month, every year that we were here. And the only debt we have is the mortgage in South Vancouver. <laughs> that, I can tell you, without bragging rights, because I could look to you and say, once you have grabbed hold on, to the message of God that He is faithful, that money matters, but your relationship with God matters, something will happen in life. And this is, I would like to very much like that you take it to heart because it's one of the message that will speak true to us and it will be a good test on how we continue our life this year as a church as a family as an individual i have two people this morning jay and ray who's going to give you a paper the paper is simply if you want one you could get you could get it it's not the outline this morning it's the record of the giving of our church from our treasurer and he wants it to give it to you so that you can actually look at the records of how God is being good to us for the last three months, namely January to March. And this is something we need to look into carefully. You need to have it in your fridge because when you see it, especially January, it's not very encouraging, but when you get to March, something is happening. And this message this morning, the message last week, this, uh, last week speaks so loud about this because this is one visible thing that we can be seen as someone who trusts God. This morning, I was given money and greed. I would like you to stand one more time with me so we can read the book of life together. See, I spelled it right. I don't know what happened on the first one. 
Would you stand with me as we read it together? Luke chapter 12, verses 13 to 21. Allow me to read aloud and you meditate. This is the word of God. Then someone called from the crowd, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's state with me. Jesus replied, Friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. You deserve it. God said to him, you fool. You will die this very night. Then who will get everything you work for? Yes. A person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. This is the word of God. Money and greed. I've given you an outline in our bulletin this morning. We are in daily battle against me generations. And that simply means greed. This is not just the now generation. This is old generations. This attitude is as old as mankind from the Garden of Eden from Satan himself. You will be like God, Genesis 3, 5. Today, the version we hear is different. Same demonic voice. The one who has the most toys. The one who has the biggest crowds. The one who's got most money is happy. And it's not. Because in reality, the one who's got the most is always in want. This is not a passage against the rich or having money. This is a sermon on money and greed. It has taken over and today money is the biggest factor of greediness. I don't want to tell stories. And so I look for someone who's been counseling people regarding greediness of money. One counselor who sits to a lot of people who's losing their family, who doesn't know where faith stands anymore, and they're losing their friends because now they are about to retire with a lot of money, but no faith, no family, and no friends. And this is what this guy said. He sits to a lot of people talking about, talking about what happened. And he said, over the past few years, I've come to the conclusion that our society lives in a constant state of discontentment. We're not happy with our leaders. We're not happy with our spouse. We're not happy with our children or the things that we have. Our house is too small. Our TV is an older model and the smartphone that we carry doesn't have the latest speed and technology. So what's a person to do in order to find contentment in such a restless world? And why can't we find the contentment that we're looking for? Many of us are trying to fill the void of some kind in our lives and unfortunately, we try to fill what void with things that cannot satisfy. We look to fill the void with possessions or money, but we only end up wanting more. We try to fill it with relationships or sex, but we end up feeling even more empty and depressed than when we started. My brothers and sisters in Christ, 
The message this morning is not about against money or being rich. If you are, share it to the pastors. I have no shame in talking to you about money because the Lord knows, as Pastor expressed last week, He doesn't want to know which one of you gives and which one of you don't. That's the same principle I accept and I adopt. But I want you to know and understand something. We should be the one being seen how God is a good God and if He is really good, then our pockets be, needs to be talking how we appreciate the goodness of God. And this morning is not about money, but greediness regarding money. So let's go to the passage. This is what marks the first point we are going to talk about. Someone walking with Jesus, perhaps one who's got a lot of riches, perhaps one who is well-to-do during his time. He asked Jesus, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's state with me. There's something you need to know. We don't know if their father is still alive. So it could be, it could be that they want a separated state right now and the father is still alive. And Jesus said, beware. Guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. I'd like to give you this. Money and greed comes when we have a very high opinion of ourselves. You heard this before and it screamed to our ears. I deserve this. You see, I gave you that point simply because when Jesus is walking, this is the time and I call this the peak time. This is Luke chapter 12. Jesus called 72 to follow him. Jesus started his ministry and people are following him fervently. And when I say follow, where he sleeps, they sleep. When he walks, he walks. But most of the people who are following Jesus only wants him because of what he can do. He was able to do miracles. He was able to heal the sick. He was able to do things that they haven't seen before. And so they were following Jesus because they like what he is doing. And then Jesus started talking about money. Because when money is a conversation, greediness comes to play. Greediness comes to play. They wanted to make sure that Whoa, this Jesus could do a lot of things, perhaps, when we follow Him. There's a lot of things we will be known. I will be known. I will be rich because He can do everything. And so when Jesus proclaimed the message regarding the story of greed and money, you can tell there's a lot of people who walked away because they have so much in their hands, in their property, and they think of them as someone who deserve everything that they got, and so they walk away. It's decision time as a follower of Jesus. Whenever you hear a message such as this, it's always good to ask the question, this is a decision time. Am I a follower of Jesus because of what He can give me? Or I'm a follower of Christ because He is God of all. There's, a, there's, a, there's an old saying. If God is not God of all, He is not God at all. And this is something we need to look into because this is something that happened in a long time and this guy just thinking highly about himself, about his so high of opinion of himself, and he wants to know what he deserves. I'd like to give you a latest story 
of what happened in 1989 to 1990. It's not so latest, but it's included or it's in touch with this kind of mindset. Have you seen this picture lately? This is Mark Jackson. He is a well-known guard of the New York Knicks. When he is playing, his card, this is his play card, has become well-known because of those two pictures that were included in his play card. His play card has gone viral. His play card has become expensive, not because he is a good player. You don't even, some of you don't even know who Mark Jackson is. If you know, then you're a basketball buff. But this guy, he's not even, he's not even a guy that made it as famous as the guards that we know. But the two guys that were mentioned or seen over there, their name is Lyle and Eric Menendez. Lyle and Eric Menendez. Shoot. I don't want to tell you the details of how they killed their parents. But their parents were so rich that these two, ages 18 and 21 then, wanted to get hold of the millions in the bank of dad and mom. So one night, they decided that they will kill their parents so that they can have all the millions. In fact, they got away from August to December of 1989. March of the next year, they were arrested. They were about to get away with it because they have a very good excuse. But they started spending money like crazy because they think they deserve it. We don't know when this picture was taken, but Mark Jackson can tell you that the picture were taken sometime between August and December of 1989 where the parents were killed. And this too, that's courtside in New York. And I'm trying to find out over Google how much is courtside. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. They spent $60,000 just so they can learn tennis. They spent so much money that there's more. And the only thing they have been saying all throughout this time, we deserve this and mom and dad did not give us attention in giving us money. Greediness. And their greediness come to a point where they actually killed their parents just so, just so they could get the money. And whenever I read that passage, teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's state with me. That picture comes to my mind and I wonder, I always thought, how can I take this to our time? See, the Bible is talking about the about money and greediness very clear. When you have your mind so invaded that I deserve this, that this is for me, and I am good enough to have this, and you look at yourself and you deserve it because you've been tired working 40 to 50 hours, and then you will come to a point, this is mine. That's when greediness grab hold of you. Somehow we need to guard ourselves because yeah, we could talk about those two. I don't know how they got into there, but I'm sure whenever you see what you deserve, you and me who are here this morning, we could probably look at what we deserve. We look at our house. We look at what we own. We look at our family. We look at our spouse and it's changing. And greediness comes to life. This is so true to all of us. And if we are not very good in carefully looking at ourselves, because we have a very high opinion of ourselves, and we need to guard our hearts 
Jesus defined it through a story that we read. But I'd like us to carefully read how Jesus said it. He did not even define greed. He made it a story. Look at it carefully. He told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all of my Mercedes Benz. I want to have rooms for all my money. Then he said, I know, I will tear down the old one. My barns, build bigger ones. Perhaps two more jobs. So I can buy what I want. My kids will understand. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. You notice he doesn't say anything about friends or relatives. It's all about him. And then he said, I'll sit back and say to myself, how selfish can you get when you call yourself my friend? You know what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to picture how that is. You go, good job, Ben. Hmm. My friend. You can tell he's, he doesn't have a friend. No life. You have enough. Sort away for years to come. Don't worry about your retirement anymore. It's all good. Now take it easy. Eat, drink, be merry. This is Jesus speaking. And I wonder how many people started not going with him anymore after he said that kind of story. And I wonder what will happen if we started talking this way as well. How is my opinion about myself? The I, me, myself. I deserve to take it easy. I deserve to rest. I deserve all the money I get. And Jesus is not against what you deserve. Jesus is against you becoming God to your own mind. And that's greediness. It's becoming you as God of what you own rather than God being God. And we need to be very careful because this is not just the new generations. The new generation, they like their toys, they like their cars, they like their status quo. But us who are watching them grow, I wonder what they have seen from us. We're just a different spender. But we need to be careful because what we buy speaks highly how you define yourselves. Have you gone shopping and thought about, oh, this is good for Pastor Chris. This is good for Nina. If that's how you think, please shop. Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> but most of us will go shopping. My last year iPhone watch is old. My TV is just 52 inches. My bedroom. It's only been two years. I need to change. And this is something because we think highly of ourselves. And we need to be very careful. Jesus said this. God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you work for? Money and greed ends in a snap notice. Gone. I can tell you a lot of stories. If you think you are invincible, and I'm not praying that it happens to anyone. But tonight may be the last night of our life. 
We don't know who's going to die first. Don't tell me that the, that the old ones will go ahead of the young ones. There's no way of telling who goes first. But God, in the person of Jesus Christ, when He was talking about this story, I wonder how many people start snapping out of their mind and said, this is not the guy we want to follow. We want a guy who can make us rich. We want a guy who can make us famous. And I wonder if it gets to us as a church as well. That they were snapping. Because I've been going to this church for so long and they're now still talking money and nothing happened to me. Well, first thing first, you're alive. That's good. And second, we need to give importance because we are still together. Walking towards the path that Christ gave us. This is our home. This is our church. We will walk where God wants us to walk. And sometimes we lose sight of that when we are so high in our opinion of ourselves that we think we're so good, where we think we're so bright, and then it's not. Then you will be looking for your faith. Then you will be looking for your family whom you need help. And I pray that nothing will snap in our notice because the, the, the word that was used, the word fool, it simply means there's no good reasoning that you becomes greedy with money. You cannot do this on the day of your funeral. Can you see it? That's your coffin inside. Not at the U-Ho, in the hearse. <laughs> All of us will be inside the box. And there's no other box you can carry with you. Somehow I look at that picture because it speaks to us. And I wonder what happened to all those people when God calls them, you fool. In the story that he is expressing to people. You know, sometimes we need to be careful because when God is trying to express himself, sometimes we get the impression of, ooh, what good am I getting from that? When God is expressing something from His Word, you need not to be impressed, but you need to be in conviction that you need to obey. Somehow we feel good to the messages. Being called a fool is not very impressive. But you need to accept it. Is it possible that Jesus is talking to me as well? Because I think of myself as I deserve this and I highly, highly have an opinion of myself. Let me give you something I wrote personally. Foolishness or greed, or greed of money is someone who works so hard until retirement forgetting faith, forgetting family, forgetting friends, never made it to retirement and died alone. My friends, and brothers and sisters in Christ, especially those who are my age and older, I've been to a, I've been to a funeral when there's an 18 and a 22 year old in front of the bury their father about to be buried they don't even want to look because of the hatred that they have this is real thing when we become so greedy with what we need there's those generations who are looking and they are looking if faith is real if family is real and if this is real, 
Because if we're faking each other, what's the use of going every Sunday? I'm courageously speaking to you. My kids will tell you that if our home is not a perfect home, but there's something we do. And that's being faithful to Him, to Him who calls us. And we need to really look into this because anytime, my kids, I think they're getting tired of me saying, Anak, when I die, Dad, I heard that so many times. I'm getting tired of it. I think I'm going to change it. I'm going to say, Anak, when I'm not here, Because it's a real story. It's something we need to put in mind. And then I'd like to end. Jesus, still speaking. Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. You need to key on that, that words. Rich relationships. Money and greed is poisonous. The antidote? Rich relationship with God. That, that gave me a question to give you this morning. Has our relationship with God changed our very high opinion of ourselves? You need to put that in mind. The difference between lording God and money. When you make God your God, He defends you. When you make money as your God, you defend the money. You protect it. But when you make God your God, He will defend you. This is something we need to do and we need to think about because it's worthy of concluding the passage itself. And I always thought, how can we get this to our mind? We know this story very well. Let me just share it with you. This is worthy of concluding our passage this morning. For those of you who are in love, young adults, listen to me. If you are so in love and rich relationship with God is not at work, you need to remember this. And this is not mine. I got this from Dr. Dobson. And he said, it will be good that you are focused on God, that he, your partner, or she, your partner, is focused on God. And God will give you to each other. That's a rich relationship with God. We need to teach that to our children, to our young adults, who's, who are now starting to have a... I crush Kusha. I started a Bible study of preteens, and I can see in their phones that they already have a crush, that they are really worshiping this girl that they will do anything so that they could get their attention. And I thought, if they could get that much attention to their relationship with God, then we will push that as a church. Imagine at the age of 13, perhaps 12, they can be so in love with basketball that they will hate their friends who are Idling Stephen Carey because raptors they are. <laughs> Guys, we need to be careful too in politics and sports. I think we could end up posting so many things and it gives us an anti-anti-relationship that gets into the mind of people that we just, we just have to be careful because this relationship with Christ 
You know, it's talking about money, that we, but we could be so greedy about who we think is a better player. And we need to really be good in conversing with each other that our rich relationship with God does not matter if raptors or warriors win. I'm glad I will be in YouTube. <laughs> we need to be very careful with really worshiping Duterte. Because you should be known as worshiping God first. We should be known because this thing, this greediness could get easily, easily to our hearts and to our mind and we will lose sight of this rich relationship with God. Beware when the focus is in you and not in God. And I always thought, how can we use this as a church? And I've already done so. I'd like to say, nothing proves that you love someone more than mentioning them in your prayers. You know, we could always talk about, Lord, I need this. Lord, my son is that. Lord, we our house is this. You know, we need to get out of that greedy kind of prayer as well. We need to be praying of, Lord, guard our church. Provide building for our people. Even if I don't see it, I pray that the generation of Bella will open a church in North Vancouver. Somehow, we look at our own house, we look at our own car, and we forgot why we come as a church. We're so greedy, and you're looking at the one standing too. I go to Costco. I'm preaching on Sunday. What kind of shirt should I buy? I have a Costco card. It would be good to utang it. And somehow, I needed to guard myself because how many times you talk about someone or the church when you walk to Costco or to Superstore or to the mall? Our high relationship, our rich relationship with God matters. It matters. May I give you our family. This is what matters to my family. And we got this in the very living room. Joshua 24, 15 says, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Lord, in all my ways, I acknowledge you. And direct me to the right path. I learned this from my dad. Matthew 6.33 Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And personally, this I live by. Ephesians 6.10 Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. You see, I did not just give those verses to you to impress you. I'm expressing to you that the Word of God is we need a bigger view of God and less of our high opinion of ourselves. Sometimes you need to check what verses do you really care in life? Because those words is not to make you feel good. Those are expressing to you where is my place in your heart? Am I still the God of your life? And we need a bigger view of God. We, we memorize so many things in life and the rich relationship of God, we don't even know what He says about money. We don't even know what He says. I'm, lately I'm crying because when I get our preteens to open the book of Luke, they don't even know where to look. And I spelled it like. <laughs> and this 
is something that I'm passionate about. People, bring your Bible to church. Your iPhone is okay. But we keep talking about that this matters and this is the Word of God. If I ask you, where's your Bible this morning? Don't raise it up. I'm not here to impress you. I'm just simply expressing to you greediness as a way of getting to us. We don't even have to do anything. It crawls into our mind. This is what we need because it's so poisonous. This is a good antidote. You need to say, this is the word of God and this is what I'm living for. I'm going to end, as I've said, personally, this year, with my family, with the now generation of the New Life Alliance Church, and now Fraser Valley as well, I always thought, Lord, what can I do? What is it that you still want me to do? And something snapped on me. Because I heard it from the conference, and it's our president himself. And it speaks so loud to me. Because in my mind, it's telling me. And I know it's the Holy Spirit in me. And he said, Ben, quit saying what you're able to do because they need me. Is it possible that we are so greedy with so many things in life, we forgot we need God. We need what to know what He says. And I pray that the Pantojas, that New Life Alliance Church, and Fraser Valley Alliance Church, that I will no longer say, I need to do this, I need to do that. But I will say, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, they need you more than ever. Proverbs 11, 24 says, One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give, and only suffers want. Not that I speak from want, Apostle Paul said, For I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. This is the Word of God. Amen. And I will end with the Word of God. Godliness with contentment is great gain. We brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap into many foolish and harmful desire that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, men and women of God, flee, run away, escape from all this. Pursue, run towards the righteousness of God, His godliness, His faith, His love, His endurance, and His gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. You made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Amen.